One thing that can be a pain when you're putting your trigger group back together is keeping the sear and the disconnector connected when they're in the trigger and you're inserting the trigger assembly into the housing. So here I'm inserting the sear and the disconnector together. I'm going to hold them in place just like that while I put them into the trigger, line up the hole, and insert my disconnector pin. That holds the disconnector in place, but now the problem is that the sear can still flop out, and if it's really bad, you might even lose that spring. So we'd like to hold it together while we're <coughs> inserting this assembly into the housing. The way you do that is you get a cheater pin. This steel one I got with a trigger upgrade kit that I bought once, and this goes in place of the trigger pivot pin through the sear and holds the assembly together so that you can insert it into the housing and it won't fall apart on you. Now, if you haven't bought a trigger upgrade kit, you don't have a fancy store-bought <coughs> cheater pin, so what else could you use? Well, here's one that I made out of a kebab stick, and it's very simple. I just take a kebab stick and my bicycle cable cutters, and I cut a length off the kebab stick that's about a little less than a half inch long, and I'll give you the exact measurements in just a second. There's my pin. This one is maybe a little bit too short. And then I'll kind of work it around with my fingers on the ends to give it a little bit of a taper and get any false hairs off there. And that happens to be just the right diameter, one eighth of an inch, to go inside and act as a cheater pin. Now as I push this kebab stick pin in, this one's a little stiff because it's new. Try this older one that I've used a hundred times. It pushes the other cheater pin right out. So you don't need to spend money to have a good cheater pin. All you need to do is make a cheap one. Here's another one that I made out of a little piece of 1 8 inch brass rod. I cut that with a Dremel tool and then I put a little taper on and deburred the ends just by rubbing it on some 220 grit sandpaper on a wood block because you want that to be perfectly smooth. Also, this hole is exactly 1 8 inch and if you have any burrs or anything on your cheater pin, it's not going to go through the hole properly. So the dimensions you're looking for, across the trigger, you don't want the pin, your cheater pin to extend past the width of the trigger itself. The trigger is .493 inches, at least this one is, as I measured it. And uh, so that's the maximum length of your cheater pin would be .493 inches. If it's any longer, it's not going to fit inside the trigger housing. And your minimum width, well, it's, you know, the shortest one that I have here that works um, is this wooden one that's in there now. That's 0.435 inches long. It's just got to be long enough to capture the sear inside the trigger, and then you're good to go. So, with our trigger assembly held together by the cheater pin, it's a simple matter to just insert it into the trigger housing, line up the hole, <clears throat> With the safety off, we press the trigger very slightly in order to make sure that hole's lined up. Pop in our actual trigger pivot pin, and the cheater pin pops right out the other side. And now we're good to go. We can install the rest of the components of the trigger group and uh, put it back in the rifle. I hope this was helpful.